Hello friends. Today's session is beneficial for anyone dealing with products, whether you are a product manager, product owner, business analyst, or a scrum master. And friends, I'm really excited today because we have Atuba Samad with us all the way from Pakistan. And it's the first time we are hosting someone from Pakistan, which is pretty special for us. So let me introduce you to Tuba. Uh, she works as a product manager. And today she is going to debunk some myths with our session, The Awesome Product Owner. So welcome Tuba and uh, thank you for joining us today. Tuba, over to you. Thank you, Sinan, um, for an amazing introduction. Well, I'm a Tuba, I'm Tuba Simit, and uh, I work at an um, organization named ClickChain. Uh, I'm a product manager there. So today, um, I'm going to talk about how we can embrace the certain uncertainty using the forecast. So let me quickly share my screen and so that we can move forward. So I hope my screen is visible now. Yes, we can see that. Yeah, please go ahead. Great. So uh, before we dive into the details of the forecasting, let's look into the challenge that product managers face. And so the basic challenge uh, that product managers face is when the clients, because uh, clients and the stakeholders often expect the um, clear and the definite timelines in terms of completion. Um, and I think that's a valid expectation because, um, you know, uh, the cost is involved uh, both in the time and the monetary cost. And uh, this is this is where it becomes challenging from for the product managers to provide the accurate answer for that. Um, but our traditional management approaches, you know, a promise the uncertainty um, and the rigid deadlines based on the estimates and um, and due to this the team feels pressure to uh, you know over promise the in terms of the deadlines so that they can secure the projects and um, meet the client's expectations and to deliver that within those rigid deadlines they you know pull all-nighters and work on weekends to make things work and uh this often result in, you know, delivering the half-baked things uh, where the quality is issue and um, resulting in the um, strained client and the team relationship. So, um, therefore, um, you know, the estimates fail miserably. And uh, the, the reason why they fail is because uh, they are, uh, you know, they involve random guesses. You know, and guesses are not always right because, you know, we are trying to estimate the things that are not estimatable. And since we work in a dynamic environment where the where only constant is change and uh, when dealing with such products, the requirements vary. And so does their completion dates because, you know, at the end of the day, we are not making chairs and it's not a linear equation. Uh, we're doubling the work would double the time. So it's not like that. The Since the requirements vary and the completion dates gets changed based on that variable requirements. So, uh, but the irony here uh, is that people know that the estimates are not going to work. And since they, uh, they, they can't unfollow the ritual they have been following for a, a large time period, because they fear that their world may, may get upside down. And um, uh, because uh, they have been following the ritual for a long time period in the hopes that one fine day that would work. But trust me, it will not work. <laughs> and uh, our traditional product management is still, you know, stuck with the story points, even though the person who, uh, Ron Jeffries, who actually introduced these story points has apologized for making that mistake. And uh, so um, why, uh, the reason is that uh, some people, some great folks out there has actually uh, t took a deep dive into the data and to find out the 
correlation between the story points and the cycle times. And they found an uncomfortable truth. And uh, the correlation between these two, the story points and the cycle times, is no more than the phases of the moon and the taste of your morning coffee. So this means that estimates are not going to work for us. So we might need to find out some better ways, or I would say more reliable ways to come up with an accurate answer when it comes to um, providing the completion dates. So, and that all begins with uh, tracking the data or tracking the metrics that truly matter. And it all begins uh, by gathering the actual throughput data. And by actual throughput data, uh, I mean, um, the which is the measure of the realization of the value, not just the, you know, where not just the output, where you are batching things that are completed. So now uh, mostly people ask uh, questions like, which stories should we count as throughput? Um, so uh, to answer that, uh, well, the stories that you have deployed on the production-like environment and you have received a positive feedback from the end user or the client, or in other words, like in, let me make it um, simpler for you, is those stories that uh, have no cycle time or your team does not have to think about those stories once they have, you know, delivered that to the client. Uh, customers are the end users. So if they do not have to think about those stories, this means they do not have the cycle time and that means they have delivered it successfully and it can be counted as throughput. Well, once you have the uh, throughput data, uh, you can utilize the Monte Carlo simulation tool. So, um, well, the Monte Carlo simulate, let me just uh, reshare and give you the brief overview of how you can utilize the Monte Carlo simulation tool. So, and um, let me just share my screen again. So this is the Monte Carlo simulation tool, which utilizes the random sampling technique, uh, uh, which is a statistical technique to predict the forecasted end date. Um, well, uh, you can see there are some um, inputs required for uh, in order to find out the forecasted end date. So there's a start date when you want, when your team is going to start working on those specific features or the user journeys. And then there's a low guess or high guess, the number of stories that team is going to work on. Um, and then there's a split ratio here. Um, this split ratio actually captures the uncertainty that a particular story has. Uh, for example, if you think uh, the minimum stories that the team is going to work is uh, like five, the maximum stories are seven, but, uh, but the team thinks that every fourth story is going to split into more stories, then um, you can um, capture that using the split ratio, like well, you can keep it as 1.25. And if the team thinks that uh, every other story is going to split into the, uh, you know, split into other stories, and then you can keep this high guess uh, even higher, like 1.5. And so higher the uncertainty, higher the split ratio. And then it uh, this tool allows you to forecast based on the estimate and based on the data. Now for the estimate, uh, the team can utilize the estimate uh, when they are working on a brand new product and a brand new domain. Uh, or if the team has some major, if there are some major changes in the team, like new people have been onboarded on team. So in that case, you, do, you might not have the previous data. And um, you can utilize the some low guess or high guess number of stories that your team is going to deliver within that specified time period. And once you uh, once your team gets started, you can tra start tracking the actual data and flip this to the actual data to see the uh, forecasted end dates. And uh, it results in, so the data utilizes the throughput samples 
which are uh, which the product managers need to feed on this sheet. And uh, the more accurate a prediction would be based on if your sample size is greater than seven. And, uh, you know, uh, so once I get the forecasted end date, this is how the output would look like. So it would show the likelihood of the certain dates. For example, if you, uh, if you think that um, mostly when I work with teams, uh, I generally share this 85 percentile date and my team is predictable on this date. Uh, with with respect to eighty five percent. So, uh, if you if if a client comes to you and say they that, hey, I need uh you know that on a certain date um um this all completed. You can say that well, we can deliver that on this date, but the the likelihood of or certainty of this the completion is like thirty five percent on this date based on this forecast. So um. When it comes to predictability, so how you can make teams predictable on the output? Well, in that case, uh, otherwise, if your team is not predictable on the forecasted end date, then uh, it's just a, it's just a date and um, it, it would have no value to it. So in order to ensure the predictability, you need to make sure as a product manager that there is consistency in the throughput data means, for example, if your team should be working on almost same number of stories or, you, I mean, delivering the same number of uh, stories to the end user in, in that specified time period. For example, if there are, you know, the high variability in the throughput data would cause unpredictability. For example, if it, it's in a specific week, a uh, team has worked on let's say one, uh, one stories and in the other week, team has delivered three stories. So this is this is the variation, right? In, in one week, they're working on three stories, they have delivered three stories and then the other uh, week they have worked on one story. And how can you ensure the consistency in the data is then goes back to how you slice those stories. So the slicing of those stories should be, uh, you know, the um, equal and small size. And uh, one can utilize the invest principle when slicing the stories. So invest principle is basically nothing but uh, you have to make sure that your stories are independent, your stories are negotiable, your stories are valuable, they are estimatable, small and testable. So when you once you ensure these all principles in while slicing down the stories, you will get the equal size uh, or small stories. And once you have the value-based slicing, which means that you're not, you know, uh, segregating the front-end task and back-end task, you are dividing the uh, stories into the actual value that they are going to provide to the user, end user. So in that case, um, uh, when you're working on valuable slices, to team needs to ensure that they need to self-organize and work in ensembles so that uh, like ensembles are two to five different individuals um, with different skills coming together, working on the same problem at the same time and uh, with continuous uh, flow and less variability. And this is how team can ensure the consistency and they can, you know, be predictable on the forecasted end dates. Well, um, this, uh, I remember uh, when I, uh, when I started my journey into the product management, I, uh, I worked on a, a greenfield product, which was related to digitizing the Charter, uh, charter school and the and its processes. So what happened in the early days was um, that uh, things you know things didn't go well in terms not in terms of uh, development but in terms of budget, and uh, we found ourselves going over budget. And um, so, uh, but 
what saved the day was that I had been, you know, diligently keeping the track of all InScope editions and um, which I, that allowed me to show to the clients that, hey, this is how exactly we went over budget. But um, that was a learning moment for me because I realized the importance of tracking metrics that actually matter. I, I began monitoring the cycle times based on the actual throughput. And, um, and then when, whenever there was a new InScope edition, I used to utilize this Monte Carlo simulation tool to forecast the end date, um, uh, share with my team. And then I presented those dates to the clients that, hey, this is the new InScope edition. This is what our forecast says that, uh, and this is the uh, you know, this is when we are going to finish this now. And, uh, and you know, what amazing happened, my team became predictable because they started making efforts to ensure that there is a consistency as they were aware of their throughput. Like every week they knew that they, they, they had to maintain that four to five, uh, um, you know, they have to deliver the, that value uh, to the end user. So, um, well, uh, not only this, this also ensured the, uh, this also brought clarity between the clients and um, clients and my development team because the, the clients were aware of how and why they might need more time and budget because I'd been sharing and I'd been very transparent with these forecasted end date and all the in-scope editions that, uh, that were there. So if you if you really want to provide an accurate answer to those stakeholders and the clients, you need to make sure that you are uh, incorporating the real data that allows you to make realistic decisions. And, uh, and remember, data never lies. So yeah, that's, that's all about forecasting. Great, Toba. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can unshare your screen. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. So I think uh, this is it for today, right, Toba? All right. Yeah, yeah? that's okay. it. Yeah. So thank you, Toba, for joining us and uh, sharing your insight into this amazing forecasting tool. And mm -hmm. uh, friends, if you found uh, today's content helpful, please remember to hit that like button subscribe and stay tuned for more. We will have definitely more sessions with Tuba in future. So with that thought, thank you everyone. Thank you, Tuba. Thank you. Have a great day.